Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. Now I've got this engine all assembled in the last video. Ready to stick it in. I catch you off guard. All I did was mock this up, make sure all the hardware is here and get a coat of paint on it. There's no crank pistons, nothing in it. It's just a block. So we'll get it tore back apart and we'll start by putting the sleeves in, which is what we're going to do in this video. Finally got a box of engine parts today. Box isn't completely destroyed, but pretty close. O-rings, piston rings, or piston rings. liners and some new pistons. These are the four and an eighth bore sleeves. Standard is four inch, so I'm going to wind up with a few more cubic inches. I've never done the math to figure out what. But I have not been able to find anywhere where you can even buy a standard bore anymore. Like the pulling tractor guys like the bigger ones, so that's pretty much all they make anymore. Doesn't really make a difference anyway. This is one of the original sleeves out of the engine. Looks like a match. There's the original piston. The dish is different. But I don't think that really matters. Off camera I got all these sleeves cleaned up, got the Cosmoline or whatever that stuff is to protect them from rusting. Got that all cleaned off. And it takes a long time. I mean you gotta clean, clean, clean some more. Now we're ready to put the O-rings on. That's what seals the bottom of the cylinder to the block. Two rings per sleeve. So that one's ready to go. I'll do a visual check all the way around each one, make sure there's a piece of dirt you missed or the O-ring's twisted. Make sure everything's good. So the last thing you want when you're sliding these sleeves into the block is to tear one of these O-rings or have it move out of place on you. Okay, those are all installed, ready to go in the block. Before I put the sleeves in, I'm going to do one final check. 
this shoulder that the top of the sleeve sets in inside the block. You need to make absolutely sure that's clean. And there's no debris in there. Or the sleeve won't sit all the way down in there. And then down inside where the O-rings sit, make sure there's no burrs, pits, nothing there. Make sure that is perfectly clean. Honestly, this is the first wet sleeve engine I've ever rebuilt. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty nervous about it. Because if those don't seal, antifreeze will get down into the oil. And then you got to tear the entire thing apart and start over again. And this is the very core of the engine. You want to make sure everything's right. Everything's good here. It's ready to go. Uh, put these sleeves in. I'm going to lubricate these O-rings with plain old dish soap. Do not want to use oil on these. Because oil will react with the rubber in the O-ring and make it swell up and ruin it. Give the sleeve a little turn as I'm pushing down on it. Make sure that O-ring starts in good. First sleeves in, went about as I expected it would. One other thing I forgot to mention, these blocks are prone to cracking between the cylinders. If they're cracked up here on the top side, that's not a big deal. Because the head gasket seals around there these sleeves are actually slightly higher than the deck of the block. If there's a crack there, bottom line, doesn't really matter. Now down in the bottom, where the O-rings go, if the block is cracked down there, you got problems. The block is either junk or a good machine shop may be able to fix it. But more than likely the box is going to be junk if that's the case. But mine's in good shape, so we'll keep rolling. fresh new sleeves. You can see the sleeves protrude quite a ways down into the block. But everything went well. I don't see any signs of any rubber shavings that came off where a ring got caught when it's pushing it in there. So I'm happy. I'll sleep good tonight. That was the final step to this part of the job. I'm going to double check. As I stated before, these are 4 and an 8 inch bore. You cannot get the standard 4 inch bore like the engine would have had. That would have netted me 226 cubic inches. So anybody done the math on what I'm going to wind up with per cubic inches? Leave it in the comments down below. But 
This is the final step. I'm going to double check. These bores, the top and bottom. Looks like it might be about a thousandths over towards the bottom. And they are round. You get a better gauge for the roundness. Instead of just going front, back, side to side, you should check it in thirds. These are good and they're bringing new, which they should be. But it's best to always double check rather than guess what went wrong later. When your engine self destructs before the break in period's even through. That one's about a half a thousandths under. Other than that one being a thousandths over at the bottom, I'm within a half a thousandths all the way across, front to back, side to side, top to bottom. That's more than adequate. You can check this with these snap gauges too. Very just tighten the lock nut down. It takes a fine touch to get a feel for that. And then you relock it, pull it out, measure it with your micrometer. Repeat the process. The reason I don't like doing that is because these things, I usually take four or five measurements. Make sure I'm getting something consistent before I trust what I'm actually reading on it. Plus down in this hole, it's a little harder to do. It's definitely a trick to using these things, and I don't use them unless I have to, but it can be done. Well, I'm at it. I'm going to go ahead and measure the, see what the pistons actually are so I know what my cylinder wall clearance is going to be. I'm measuring 4 inches, 120 thousandths, so that's going to be a 5 thousandths clearance, which is 2.5 per side. I'll measure it in a few different spots to make sure they're consistent. And I'll do that with all four pistons. Won't bore you with the details of showing it all. Now for the piston rings. These pistons have three compression ring grooves and then the final oil control groove. Top piston ring is a little bit thinner. I can see that without even measuring it. And it's usually made out of a harder material. That's why in the bag it's labeled one, two, three, and four. So two and three are more than likely the same, but I'm going to keep them in order as listed.
piston rings are usually marked. I don't know if I can focus on that or not. But this says top right on it. Sometimes they just have a little dot on them. Or you can go by the bevel on them depending on the ring and what it's for. But there is a top and bottom to all rings. Now the biggest mistake you can make is to just spread it out, snap it on there, call it good. Too many people do that, but it's very important to check your ring gap. Just because these are brand new rings does not mean they're right. In fact, 99.99% .99 of the time they are not right. So we'll get them set. To do that, slide a ring into the groove. Careful not to twist it. And take one of these pistons, push it down a ways to make sure the ring is nice and square to the bore. And then check that gap. Now the general rule of thumb for a stock engine is you want four thousandths of ring gap per one inch of bore. So according to my math for a four and an eighth inch bore, which is 4.125 divided by 0 .004, that comes up with 16 and a half thousandths. I'm going to go with, the, I'm going to round it up to 17 that extra half is not going to hurt anything. Then do my standard double check, make sure I got the 17 thousandths. And we we're pretty close to 17 thousandths, but not quite there. So we'll pull this out and get it filed, open it up a little bit. And when you file a ring gap, you only want to file one side and you need to keep it square to the other. If it's off a little bit, it's not really going to notice, but you're going to want to keep it as close as possible to being perfectly square. What I like to do is set a ring on there, square it up against the stone. Double check it to the best I can. And I will take a Sharpie, draw a reference line to keep the ring on. Now I can go ahead and Now put it back in and recheck it. Not quite there yet, so I'll hit that one a couple more turns. Key thing here is just take your time. Don't get carried away. As you can see, this by the time I do three rings per hole, it's probably going to take me a couple hours to get done. I'll get them done, and these rings will be ready to set in. Now I'm going to repeat the process with the second and third compression rings with one exception. You want the gap to be a little bit larger on these because any blow by that does get by the first ring you want to guarantee it will get past the second ring so you don't build pressure between the two rings and the rings start fluttering in there. It's about the worst thing that could happen next to not having enough gap to where the ends of the rings would butt together and then they've got nowhere to go and they'll start scoring your cylinders and or break the lands out of the piston. Okay, for the second and third rings you want to go five thousandths per inch of bore 
And 4.125 times 0 .005 comes out to 20 thousandths of an inch. Before I get too carried away and lose track where I'm at, when you're done grinding the ring gaps, you want to take a hone and take any burrs off these rings. These rings are hardened, so you're not going to have a big burr like you would with mild steel, but you still want to knock that off. Make sure there's no edge you can catch your fingernail on. Then these pistons will be ready, or these rings will be ready to go on. this ring on. Doing this backwards, I should be starting at the oil ring and working my way up. There you can tell the difference in the rings. That one's shiny on the outside. That one's got a black coating. I have no idea what the differences are in them, but I know there is differences. Another good idea is to do these per cylinder and mark which one they are. In this case, this will be the number one cylinder, so I just mark it with the number one, so I know which is which later. This isn't a high performance or racing engine by any means, so it probably don't make a difference, but still a good practice to get into. That's going to do it for this video, everybody. Thanks for watching. Got one piston ready to go. Get the other three done. So the next video, I'll be working on putting the crankshaft in. Actually getting these pistons in the bores, getting a rotating assembly put back together. Hope you find this video helpful. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing. If there's something more you want to see or if I'm spending too much time on one thing. Anything and everything. I'm open to any criticism. Catch you next time, everybody.